a lot of you guys have heard me put out the statistic, which is a very factual statistic, and I don't want people to get upset about what I'm saying. But we do know that lesbian relationships, the statistic says that they have a high level of domestic violence among all domestic relationships. So higher than men on men, higher than women with men, they are the highest rate of violence, okay? The reason I bring that up is just to say that this story is a very heinous story. This story is not indicative on all rainbow relationships, but what I am saying is that this is something that we need to look at because this is a problem. Tallahassee police arrest a woman in a suspicious death of a three-year-old boy that y'all see right there. The news did not put out his face and they did not put out his name. He is posthumous, excuse me, I said posthumous. He's passed away because that's the wrong term. He has passed away. He is dead. He has been murdered. Arrest records detail a gruesome scene. And the woman that y'all saw, if y'all could even call this a woman, this young man that y'all see on my screen that I guess checks the box of a woman, but we're going to call this young man Talia Jefferson. Okay. And Talia Jefferson is the young man looking woman that is arrested in the killing of a three-year-old boy confessed to the police that he, she beat him to death. This little boy that y'all see on my screen. Let me, let me get back to his picture. This individual right here beat a little boy, a three-year-old boy to death with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. This dude beat a three-year-old boy to death with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. And they also say that this little three-year-old boy was likely dead by the time that this young man took that little boy to the hospital. Talia Jefferson 23 years old, grown as hell, was arrested on Tuesday on charges of murder and aggravated battery in the death of that little boy. That little boy's name right there is Miguel Wright, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure I got that right. Miguel Douglas Emmanuel Wright. So my memory did serve me correctly. He was closer to about this age right here. That's baby Miguel. And Talia Jefferson lived with him and his six-year-old brother, both of whom suffered abuse in the past and one of their parents, according to court records. Tallahassee police arrested her in suspicion of the three-year-old boy's death. Arrest records detail a gruesome scene and during Talia Jefferson's interview with the investigators, she recalled seeing blood spray from the boy as she swung the tire iron at his head. <sighs> blood sprayed from his head as she swung the tire iron at him. Talia Jefferson arrived at Tallahassee Memorial Hospital at 6.58 p.m. with the boy who had severe trauma to his head and face and was unresponsive with a body temperature of 88 degrees. He was pronounced dead six minutes later by medical staff who contacted police. Now Jefferson told officers that the little boy was standing on the sink and brushing his teeth when he fell off and struck his head on the toilet, causing the porcelain to shatter. Ain't that something? So you mean to tell me this, in, this is yet another individual, another one who tried to blame the death on this kid 
that they have fallen off of something. Can we just say this real quick? To all of the people out there who are probably going to abuse children and you just haven't been caught yet, just know that when you go to the investigators and you go to make up this concocted, cockamamie ass story, just know that us and the majority of us are not going to believe that these kids fell, quote unquote, fell off of something. Y'all are all telling the same bullshit story and I'm sorry, but we just don't believe you. Everybody saw about the kids fell off of something. I'm sorry. We're just going to think you're lying. Okay. Just want to throw that out there. But his injuries were not consistent with the fall described by that particular individual. Court records state hashtag not my words. He had severe cuts on his face and hands, bruises on his arms and legs and signs of older scars older injuries older scars on his shoulder and torso I'm about to say something that might piss y'all off here in a minute Jefferson says she sent the boy to brush his teeth at around 3.30 p.m. about 20 minutes after his older brother came home from school I want y'all to notate that time 3.30 p.m. No one else was home at the time. She says she tried to care for him after the so-called fall for about 10 minutes before driving him to the hospital. But when investigators pointed out that her timeline did not add up, she admitted that she attacked him after she ordered him to get down off the sink. She said 3.30 p.m., but we found out earlier that she took him to Memorial Hospital at 6.58 p.m., which would mean that's more than three hours after the fact. So clearly that doesn't fall in line with the time frame. She said his refusal to climb down when told angered her, according to arrest reports. Jefferson said that he, she walked into the bathroom and retrieved the tire iron from a tool kit. Lord have mercy. Jefferson advised that she, he, she returned to the bathroom and threw the tire iron at him, striking him upon the side of the face. And that doesn't make any sense. She initially said that she struck him only once, but later admitted that she hit him several times, including after he tried to run away from her. Lord. Afterward, she hid the tire iron somewhere outside of the residence. She would admit that the boy was likely deceased prior to transporting him to TMH, the arrest report says. Jefferson indicated that he was unresponsive and that she had and, at, and that she had carried him out to the vehicle. She suspected that he was no longer alive. Hashtag, where is the biological mother at? Hashtag, where is the biological father at? I'm sorry, but another girlfriend does not make up for a biological father. And yes, y'all heard me say that. And I'm going to say it again. Because just as well as there is no individual that can take the place of a mother there is no individual that can take the place of a father no matter if they look like a man hello let's put some respect on biology for a moment she also admitted that she had used physical force against the preschooler and his brother during prior incidents she said that she was in a relationship with the parent of the boys and watched them about five times a week while the parent was at work. That's the mother. So the mom go to work five days a week and she leaves this baby in the hands of somebody who she liked being in a relationship with. Not a babysitter, not a proven caretaker, 
but just somebody you enjoyed having sex with and you like laying up under and you like laughing and joking and giggling with, right? Not somebody who's qualified to be around kids. And for the life of me, I don't understand how these people can continue to keep bringing their children around somebody that they're in a relationship with and think that that qualifies this person to be the caretaker. Let alone the neck tattoos. But I digress. I know a lot of y'all don't believe that crazy people have neck tattoos. Maybe it's just a fashion statement. But I think most people that have face tattoos and neck tattoos have something about them that just ain't right. But it's just a personal opinion. Five times a week while mom was at work. She would indicate that the three-year-old boy was stubborn and say that he often required more strikes or blows than his other, his older sibling. Previous incidents, let's talk about that. Previous incidents of abuse are under investigation by the Florida Department of Children and Family Services. The state agency has taken custody of the boy's older brother according to court records. So, if there is a record of previous abuse, how did they get to keep these kids when there is a record of previous abuse? That is a huge question. And yes, that is a huge red flag because if they had evidence of previous abuse, then that means they could have got these kids out this house and could have potentially have saved these kids' lives. Jefferson is currently being held with no bond in the Leon County Detention Facility. During uh, Jefferson's first court appearance on Wednesday, he, she said that she intends to hire a private attorney to represent her. Leon County Judge Stephanie Morris continued the proceeding until Thursday so her attorney could be present. In the wake of the charges, TPD is encouraging people to report child abuse by calling the police at 850-891-4200 or Crime Stoppers at 850-570-TIPS or the Florida Abuse Hotline at 800-962-2873. And also, Ms. June Bennett has been posting the links for the National Child Abuse Hotline, which is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, we're going to come back to those screenshots here in just a moment. Let me go ahead and get the couple of news videos that were here. Get those up. Give you guys the fair usage. Let's talk about this. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And while you guys are here, if y'all would, we're only, we're really stuck right now. I don't know why we're stuck at, uh... 444 thumbs up. Can y'all get us to 700 thumbs up? We only need 200 people to click the thumbs up, please. Please find it in your heart to just show some love to these babies and just click the thumbs up. Candy said, Jay, thanks for helping these babies. By the way, I have neck tattoos. I know I'm cray cray. <laughs> thank you, Candy Cox, but thank you for more for your support for standing up for these babies and allowing them to have a voice. So shout out to you. Here's the news videos. Let's get it. New tonight, the woman accused of beating a three year old to death in Tallahassee will stay in jail for now. That's the word from a Leon County judge this morning who says the murder and the child abuse charges against 23 year old Talia Jefferson are justified. ABC 27 Chantel Navarro has been following this story for us today. Chantel, what's next in this investigation? Jefferson will be held without bond until her first pretrial hearing. Now tonight, what happened to three-year-old Miguel is bringing attention to a bigger issue. Held no bond until your the pretrial motion for detention can be heard in front of the trial judge. Okay. 
23-year-old Talia Jefferson in front of a judge on Thursday where she was assigned a public defender in the murder of three-year-old Miguel. Court documents released on Wednesday show she confessed to beating Miguel to death with a tire iron on Monday. Documents show there were signs of prior abuse on his body, with Jefferson admitting she'd been physical with him and his older brother before. While these circumstances are rare, cases of child abuse in the Big Bend are not. Currently appointed to well over 700 children in six counties. The Guardian Ad Litem program in Leon covers the entire Big Bend. They're the people the court assigns children to after an independent investigation of abuse by the Department of Children and Families. Once their investigation is complete, the group works with volunteers to determine if the child can stay with a relative or will be put in foster care. It would be nice to think that child abuse was uh, on the decrease, but that's just simply not the case, particularly since we have been in this pandemic since mid-March. Sika Green is with the Children's Home Society. The organization handles case management, foster care, and operates a child protection team. Green says the Florida Abuse Hotline receives 15 to 20,000 calls a month. Now, they're only seeing about 3,000 calls monthly. Now we are in a space where many children are home doing hybrid. Uh, there is definitely more opportunity for, for frustrations to arise. Green says it's partially due to less eyes on those kids due to remote learning. Green says it's now up to the community to watch out and help these kids stay safe before another tragedy happens. Green says if you see a child thinning, has bruises or flinches at the touch or the sound of their name, that could be signs of abuse. If so, they encourage you to call the Florida Abuse Hotline. Those numbers are on our website. That's WTXL.TV. For now, live in Tallahassee, Chantal Navarro, ABC 27. This 23-year-old Tallahassee woman faces murder charges accused of hitting a three-year-old boy with a tire iron while he was brushing his teeth. The Tallahassee Democrat reports Talia Jefferson was arrested after taking the child to the hospital with severe head trauma. Doctors pronounced the boy dead and medical staff called police. Officers say Jefferson initially told them the child fell while standing at the sink and hit his head on the toilet. But they say the injuries were not consistent with that story and there were signs of previous abuse. Jefferson lived at the home with the child, his six-year-old brother, and the boy's parent, who she was in a relationship with. Jeff Petrullis for CBS, Miami.com. And guys, I almost forgot I got one more video, and I think I did get the biological mom to speak out. So again, if y'all would click that thumbs up, share the stream. I think I did get that video, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to take a chance and I'm going to play this. Here we go. By the time they arrived. Today I talked to the Miguel's mother, Erica Jenkins. The two had been in a relationship for four years. Tonight she says she's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details of what went on with my child. And I'm still waiting to hear back from investigators on what exactly went on. It's important to know that court documents say that Miguel had other scars on his body consistent with prior abuse. Jefferson admitted to officers that she's hit the boy in the past, along with his other older sibling, who's now with DCF. Uh, you've come in contact with is a victim. Whoa. And I was very fortunate to find this video. Let me let y'all hear this again. This is the biological mother. Let me let, me let y'all hear this again. Let me let y'all hear this again. By the time they arrived. Today I talked to the Miguel's mother, Erica Jenkins. The two had been in a relationship for four years. Tonight she says she's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details of what went on with my child. And How do you not know the full de Why do you even have that damn what do you call that thing on your head like are you about to go bake a cake why are you wearing that on your head it's bright and sunny outside <sighs> Just... why ask logical questions nonetheless why do you not know what's going on with your child five days of the week 
I worked. My daughter's mom worked. When we were raising our kid, we knew what was going on with our daughter 24 hours a day, seven days a week. How did you not know what was going on with your kid? Because you left your kid with a girlfriend and not a babysitter? A qualified caregiver? Huh? Because you wanted to save some money. We is out here struggling. But you continue to keep making kids. Huh? You continue to keep making kids. So why do broke people continue to keep making kids? Am I am I wrong for asking that question? Huh? Maybe I am. I don't know. She's still trying to come to terms with what happened to her son. So just pray for us and stop speculating because I still don't know the full details. Now I want y'all to remember that they, before y'all feel sad for her, they are currently under investigation for previous child abuse. Can y'all post that in the chat? Under investigation for previous child abuse. Welfare checks, previous child abuse. The children had scars and bruising from previous child abuse. Hello with what happened to her son so just pray for us and stop speculating because i still don't know the full details of what went on with my child and i'm still waiting to hear back from investigators on what exactly went on it's important to know that court documents say that miguel had other scars on his body consistent with prior abuse jefferson admitted to officers that she's hit the boy in the past along with his other older sibling who's now with dcf uh, you've come in contact with is a victim <laughs> that's why y'all need to be careful before y'all just come out and start defending these people these individuals mookie lolo called out what i noticed and i don't know if anybody else noticed this the mom had a relationship with that individual for four years What's wrong with that picture? Oh, that's right. The little boy is three years old. This person in a relationship with the mom for four years, but you have a three-year-old kid, and I'm assuming that that individual doesn't have the biological tools to be able to provide the seed that that mother would need to create that baby. Huh? Hmm. It's a little bit curious as far as a motive, don't you think? I am so curious to find out what uh, Department of Children and Family Services is going to end up finally reporting as far as on that previous abuse. But it seems very, very likely that there was already a built-in motive. And that motive was the fact that this woman had got cheated on with the fact that this woman had a lust for the male uh, physical, the male nature, yes, and had sex with the father and created this kid. And since they were in a relationship, that would mean that the mom cheated on the girlfriend and the mom is acting like, well, I don't know why this woman will freak out on my kid when she already knows that you created this kid out of infidelity. Yes, I think that would probably be a motive that most people would understand. Oh, yeah, that's right. The reason that this person committed murder is because you cheated on them. That's at least a motive and it doesn't make it right. But it does give us a motive. It does give us some closure to understand what was going on in this feeble head, pea brain individual's mind. With half her eyebrows cut off, you can clearly tell that that idiot is stupid. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter what was going on in this relationship. Matter of fact, let me back this up and show you guys this screenshot from the biological father on Facebook. And he said, how the F you gonna beat my baby? And that's from the biological father. 
I would love for him to explain how we even get to this point. How you end up sleeping with this with this woman that's in a relationship with a whole female. You end up making a baby by her. But let me tell you guys this, because this is very important as well. So y'all can hear from the biological father. The biological father on Facebook, and y'all can read this. Do y'all need me to make that bigger? You probably do. I'll make it bigger for you. Let me blow this up on the screen so you guys can read a little bit more of what I saw on Facebook. Here we go. Let's read this together. The biological father said, I hadn't seen my kids since Corona started. Going through this custody battle, I called TPD five times to do welfare checks each month until they told me they would no longer go. It's a civil matter. I didn't even know where they even stayed. I feel like I wasn't there for my baby. And if it wasn't for my sister, I wouldn't have spent the little time we had together. If DCF was called, why didn't they been take my babies out that situation? The system failed me and my son and now my baby is effing gone. Well, I can tell you guys this. You could definitely tell that the school system failed the father because this nigga don't understand what punctuation is. At all. I don't know. When did we when did we just say, you know what, screw punctuation? When did we start doing that in America? I can't even read these sentences half the damn time. But this is what the father said, and I want y'all to understand that the father seemed like he wanted to see his kid, and based on what his statement is, the mother prevented him from being able to see his kid. All the while, the mother let his kid stay with a girlfriend who was upset at him and her for this kid even coming to existence. What is wrong with these niggas? Say it so you can hear me. This is nigga activity. Nigga is as nigga does. Sleeping with these irresponsible chicks with no type of protection, which leads to STDs and babies. You leave your kid with an unqualified caretaker that's already mad at you and him and wonder, well, our eyes don't know how this situation came about. We have no idea how the situation came about. And you know what's crazy, even crazier? Is why do you make it seem like you had no options to take your kid somewhere, ma'am, Erica? You had no options to take your kids anywhere, but the dad wanted to see his kid and you refused to let the kid, the, the dad see his kid. And the only way he got to see his kid is because his sister stepped in and said she wanted to see the kid. And then on the side, she let the dad see the kid on the side. That's a damn shame that men like him and like me would have to go through some stupid stuff like that. absolutely ridiculous I think the dad the kid would have stood a better chance in the dad's care but instead you left it with this disgruntled girlfriend boyfriend that you were in a relationship for four years in this real entanglement huh why the kid is three years old but you've been in a relationship for four years I think that everybody in this situation was selfish. I think that everybody in this situation was selfish. And I think that everybody thought about their personal pleasures before they thought about this beautiful little kid that they all brought into this world. He did not ask to be here and they abused him to death. He did not deserve that. And for that, I hope he gets justice. 
I hope this baby gets justice. I hope the dad gets justice. I'm not mad at him, even though, like I said, you know, I feel like everybody kind of played a role in causing this situation to come about. But nonetheless, it still doesn't make what happened to this boy right. I do want to wish Miguel Douglas Emmanuel Wright, three years old, young prince, R.I.P. He didn't deserve this. He deserves justice, and we hope he gets it. I hope they do more of a full investigation, investigate the mom, and investigate the girlfriend acting as the boyfriend. They both need to be punished for what they did. This is your boy DJ Jess J with the AFC. This is not a me thing. This is a we thing. And we got to start coming together as parents and as the community in America. We are all Americans and we got to do better.